Hey guys, today we're going to talk to you about a top secret BMW project we're working on and last minute preparations as we're trying to get ready for the hand-built show. Stay tuned. Okay, so this is our super duper top secret project coming to us from BMW. This is a, if you can't tell, a motorcycle engine that has not been released into a production bike. This is a pre-production prototype engine, drivetrain, differential and all that. They gave us a full running thing that we can't talk about. And we took the motor and gearbox and rear end and we built a, a model of it in CAD. Auerbach and I worked on it for a month or so and then concepted out what this is gonna be. Uh, this bike is gonna be, and this video will probably show you, this is gonna be a land speed bike. Uh, kind of inspired by the original Hene bike and inspired by the bike that we built inspired by the Hene bike. That's a mouthful, but it's totally true. These are 23 inch slicks mounted on 23 inch wheels, mounted to a uh, complete hub that Auerbach designed and machined. It's already been powder coated, so it doesn't look like it, but this is all billet alloy uh, aluminum. And then these wheels that we've custom mounted, these 23 inch tires that were no also never made it to production. These are 23 inch pro prototype essentially. Uh, that uh, Dunlop was kind enough to supply us with for this project. Proportionally speaking, they don't look that big because they're next to this giant engine, but when you look at, these are big. Anyway, Alec, what are you working on? Uh, I'm working on mounting all the electrical components and where they're gonna live and how they're gonna live and how much space I got. And there's a lot of it. So this is an ECU? This is the ECU, this is the coil driver. There's reg rec, obviously a battery, fuse block, uh, a couple of relays, a main fuse. Tiny bit of wire that we're not gonna use. <laughs> yeah, like. so once we get all the electrical components into place, then, uh, then it's a matter of connecting all the connectors and then seeing where we can shorten wiring cut to, yeah, off. cut everything down to, so, to the right So way. he's building, they're going to build brackets, actually this already has a bracket on the bottom, back yeah. of it, steel, and they're gonna build full brackets that make everything hard mount inside here. So everything will be contained underneath this bat, this entire cover. Uh, this is, looks like a wireframe, because it is just a wireframe, and he's gonna build out um, a complete aluminum color, cover to, to cover this all up. Yeah. Should be pretty cool. Um, it's a challenge to get that all into one little package. It is, especially, you know, since there's gonna be a whole kind of cage frame around it, so. You can see here, um, uh, Auerbach machined this full top bracket. We've got this big aluminum bar that comes out and these are titanium ends that were machined um, that we will be welding the ends of the frame together. So what I'm gonna show you is the wire frame over here that we did in steel. Andy and I worked on it for about a week or so. This is a complete wire frame with just using welding wire or, or a rod to, to come up with a, a basic overall design and shape of what we needed to mimic. And this guy, Ty, Ty the guy, what are you working on? Helping these guys with mounting the electric. I was gonna say, that doesn't look like titanium. Nope. This it looks is, like mild steel. Yep, stainless. And what are you about to start doing? Start welding up the frame. So, go ahead. Taking that there rod underneath the wire fixture you got there. <clears throat> Three eighths titanium. You guys can see this is not. This is not mild steel, it's titanium. So it's solid three eighths inch titanium. It's quite thick, but thin when you think about it from a frame perspective. Yeah. And you're gonna weld together all these little cut and cope and weld. Yes. All of this out of titanium, somehow. Uh, we've given them a significant challenge. Um, I can tell you the entire design perspective of this bike is that the engine's asymmetrical, the drivetrain's asymmetrical, we're building this entirely asymmetrical frame. You can even see, if you look from the top down, it looks like it's all crooked. No, 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 you were good right there where you were. It, it looks crooked, but it is. <laughs> it's because it is. Um, uh, it's built to, to pull all the strength to the right side of the frame where the drive train actually is, where the drive shaft and the rear differential is. Titanium, or his name is Ty, we call him Titanium, or I call him Titanium, is going to weld Titanium, his first Titanium frame ever, right? Yep. Um, What's cool is, even though this is like essentially nearly 40, 40 linear feet of wire, um, if you made this out of mild steel, it would, it would weigh like 50, 60 pounds, which is super heavy. But on titanium, it will be about eight and a half pounds. Total weight for this entire frame that holds the whole bike together. See how much welding rod I throw into it. You look nervous. A little bit. 
Let me see the close-up on his face. <laughs> you're, you're a little nervous? It's gonna be fine, dude. Yeah. You're gonna make it work. You can see over here, uh, Brandon, he's been doing test welds and breaking them apart using our press. And then he got to some of these that he was, he was happier with. Um, you can see the, one of the unique things is the, the heat discoloration that happens with titanium when you start to get it hot. You can actually really see it here. Tell, someone told me that it's not supposed to discolor. That means you've used the wrong, gotten to the wrong temperature. But we'll see. I like seeing this. That's not tie, it's titanium only. Because if you were to use these same bits and the same blade on um, uh, another type of material, whether it be aluminum or uh, steel, it would uh, contaminate the welds or the pieces as he was to, to start cutting everything. So you want it to all be titanium. Anyway. Looking forward to hearing all the comments. Oh, online telling us that we're doing it wrong? Yeah. Everyone, we probably are doing it wrong, but I can tell you uh, it's cool to try new things and uh, we learn every day and that's the cool part of what we do is that we get the chance to, do, to try new stuff. I'm excited about trying new stuff. Totally. It's about time we did that. Yeah. Seems like we're always doing the same old thing, right? Never. It's totally never true. Yeah. Anyway, Chris Davis, what are you up to? Uh, same as these other guys, working on electrical mounting for this BMW project. Are we actually going to have fuses? Is you, you're telling me we're going to use fuses this time? Mm -hmm. Instead of an M unit, and why? Uh, this bike, the electronics are so simple, there's no value for uh, an M unit. There's no lights, there's no horn. Uh, so we're just trying to keep it simple. We're making a race bike, right? There won't be a headlight, there won't be a taillight, there won't be a gauge. None of that stuff's necessary. We're just going to have ignition on and off. And that's pretty much it, actually. Yeah. We'll have an on and off switch to give it power, and then we have a starter button, and that's it. So there's just no point in having the rest of it uh, and using a PV PDM. So this is titanium down here, I'm seeing? Can you come out here, Brandon? Oh, yeah. It's one so, of the bosses that Auerbach So this is on. one of the frame bosses, right? Auerbach uh, machined this from titanium, and all the frame pieces will start to attach here. Same with up here, obviously, what I showed you guys a while ago. One right here as well. Uh, lower uh, uh, frame boss. He machined this. If you step back just a bit, machined this and the the axle sleeve and collar. This is all billet al aluminum, obviously. Um, it's been quite a bit of work already. It's okay. Three weeks. Three weeks. It's almost yeah. finished. Yeah, no sweat. It's almost done. This is a lot more done than it looks. We'll show you guys some rendering so you can see what we're after. Okay. I think we're gonna leave you alone. We'll be here this weekend. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, what, what he's saying is we'll be here for the next three weeks, all day, seven days a week. Hi, what are you doing, Andy? Uh, I'm machining a setup spacer. For the... Uh... For this piece right here. It's a lovely piece of titanium that uh, Ted Word has machined for us. This is a frame boss. Uh, yeah, it's the part that the ball joint for the upper triple okay. oh, yeah, yeah. goes Sorry, into. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know if it's a ball joint or not. It, it might just be a pin and a bearing. Something like that. I don't remember. Something for the front end. Yes. So it's all hands on deck. If you can can't tell, we could do this all day. Walk around and Chris is back in there grinding. Uh, Josh Gage. Josh Gage is over here. What are you doing, Josh? I was waiting for you guys. Oh, you're waiting for us. I want to show you my powder coat. Oh, show me your powder coat. It's in here though, and it's, it might be loud. <laughs> it's going there. It's loud. What's happening in here? Oh, that was nice of you. Turned it off. What are you powder coating, Josh? So the samples for frame finishing and some chrome. Oh. So. We've, so we've kind of gone full circle. We normally hire someone to do all our powder coating, but Josh was nice enough to take the instruction from Chris Davis to build us our own powder coating oven. Yep. And powder coating station. Little, little booth. Which is in here. It's in there. It's kind of it's kind of messy. He's got a little powder coating booth. Dirty. Dirty job. It's really fun, right? Yeah. You can see we've got this really fantastic Eastwood powder coating setup. I don't even know. I didn't know we owned our own. We do. Um, and then, and then what we've done is uh, because I, you know, I have some preferences about how we do final finishes on this frame. You can see we've got some very similar looking pieces of titanium that came from over there. Those test pieces that um, Gage has bought six different kinds of powder coat, mm -hmm. and you're just testing them all. So this is. That's a transparent flat black. It's not very transparent. It's not. I was just going to say, this is what? That's uh, clear too? Yep. So it's just, just kind like of tiny slightly tint. tinted. And this is? Like a 
charcoal transparent. I like that I one the best. I can see it, but it does, But you yeah. can see it covers up a little bit of the weld colors. Yeah. But it, and it's got a little kind of yellowy tint to it, too. It's kind of But nice. I can still see a little bit of brass in yep. there. Yeah. Actually, I think I like that the best as well. Mm -hmm. But you have three more, right? Or what well, are the other we ones? We have the solid tones that are going to be... Oh, that's this. Yeah. So that's a blackjack. BJ. BJ. Okay. Another flat black, stone black. Okay. And yeah. then a chrome that we're testing out. I'm gonna What's do this another. for? That's uh, if we wanted to match different part and then maybe overspray either the transparent on top of it to kind of tint it a little bit. I see. To kind I of see. match the titanium a little bit. Yeah, I think this is my favorite. Cool. But you know, we might go clear too, because cl clear doesn't, that's clear? Yeah, that's clear, clear. clear tint. I kind of like this. Mm -hmm. I want to do another test where I scotch bright the, kind of the heat mm -hmm. color out of it. Okay. And, and then shoot it again. So what I like the most about this project and the whole gist of the project, I don't know if we told you guys, is that the overall way I looked at the design was BMW has got this cool platform, this engine, gearbox, and transmission, is that you would be able to look past the frame mm -hmm. and only see the silver engine underneath, right? Like you would, yes, the frame could be impressive if you want to step back and look at just the frame, but if you want to see the engine, it's not hard to look right. past right all those intersecting lines of whatever and still see the polished aluminum or at least sanded aluminum engine. So Gage has been taxed. You spent how much time on that rear drive? I spent like a day and a half. A day and a half uh, sanding. sanding out all the rough castings on that rear drive. Thumbs kind of hurt, but it looks better. <laughs> it looks better. It looks better. So, so that we could really highlight that, that, that whole uh, drive line. Um, and this, again, is just, we also don't want to cover up all the great work that everyone's done, fabrication, design, or welding from, from Ty. Mm -hmm. So this looks great, dude. I, I'd be... I think I'd be cool with either one of those. This just looks like black, you're right. But it also doesn't look bad, I don't know. Yeah, it's still like a, it's it's not full black, it's a little more brown, but I think that might be the titanium coming through it. So I might want to see some larger like pieces, pieces of this. Of if you could do, I mean, we have a little piece of scratch titanium that's mm -hmm. that's that's flat. Yep. That might help as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't want to, you know, cut anything up as far as titanium rod, so Ty has enough. Yeah, these extras. But like, Maybe when we narrow it down, we'll do like this yep. and this color mm -hmm. with charcoal and another, you know, another bigger piece, another longer piece in connection with, with this stuff. Yeah. With that one. Okay. Cool. Oh God. Good luck. This is fun. We're going to rely. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> All hands on deck. Three weeks, it's six like, guys. It's like science. We're testing stuff. Oh, I thought you meant the entire, we're testing this, the staff to see if they can build a motorcycle in three weeks. Uh, yeah. Normally, it's reality TV, I think, that gets this to done. But anyway, all right, guys, that's the first daily of our big BMW secret project. Um, uh, in the meantime, everything in the workshop has been put on hold for us to try to finish this. And then we're, the whole rest of the staff, right? That's only six or seven of us. The rest of the staff is working on trying to get preparation for the handbill show done. Look at this. Look, this is just for one motorcycle. And this is just the last two days. We don't normally do this. We normally do this all digitally. We've gone back to the whiteboard because we need that for quick reference as we check in. We have a meeting uh, twice a day, pretty much, uh, about this one project. So I'm really proud of the team. The team's kicking ass. <sighs> Share this video, guys. Tell people you like us. Whatever. Thanks for watching.